hello guys welcome back to netscode.org channel in this video we are going to talk about creating a login maui app whereby this is going to drive the data from an api both the android and a window app that's a desktop application i have done a video um, on this login app but this one we are going to go into detail than what we did in the other video because if you check on the screen there is a, the version that we're going to see when we finish developing this so that's the ui because we have then that icon and we have the sanity continuum we have our credentials here and that is a username or that's an email uh, as a username and we have the password so this also password okay so this also a password you see we have email and password now we have remember me and forget password actually these two features we haven't i haven't implemented them yet maybe i'll do them later because if i decide to do it it's going to increase the length of the video and maybe it's going to be step by step so we we'll to try to add a little feature to this and next one you talk about how to increase or how to create or how to perform the remember me and forget password functions okay and aside from that so we have new user sign up so that is a login interface that you can see as i'm not having a sign up um form yet but i have the link over here and there's a button now that is an api and it is a user now this api I think we've done it before in the previous video. That is the API that we used. I'm going to um, go through this how to create this. Okay, again. And also, this is the desktop version. Now, you can see um, that is. So, because we have login as admin. And you can see we have from here as home, about, and contact us. Now, I can click on sign out. So, sign out and back to the page. So, in the desktop side, this is what you see let's go in there and I'll create a different user so try this out now this user is going to be let's say f hughes so email is f at f.com my half password f at one two three that is a password now if i click on execute let's see what happens here All right, so it's executed now. Now let's use this credential to sign in here. So instead of this, I'm going to say f at f, and the password here is f at one two three. Now if I log in, see what happens. Now I click on this. Now we see I have login as f as f, right? So this is an email, and that is what it is holding as a username. You can see. So now as soon as I click on sign out something happened and as we can see we have this known as the fly out i have home so this is a home welcome home we go back again you can see we have about so welcome to about us and now the next one is contact us welcome to contact us so we have three components or content pages being created and now we can navigate within them in the fly out section so that is what i you want us to do in the previous video that we did um, you couldn't uh, move up to this section and now here we are trying to increase it so if you want to learn how to create this api i suggest you watch that video but here i'm going to go through a lot on how to create it as well so if you're not even having the idea from the first video we can still grab it over here okay so um it is an introduction or it's an introductory to this project now once i'm done with this i'm going to pause the video and I'm going to close this whole thing up and start again so you all work together. You make sure you have Visual Studio 2022 installed. It could be the preview version or the 17.1 version also. So, and um, you have your API, and that is the Android emulators as well. And currently, what I'm using here is a 5.1. So, you can choose any of them. When you get there, I'll show you where to choose from and how to move on with that. So um, let's stay in start. I'm, I'll get back soon. 
then you move on to start the whole project. Okay, so everyone, welcome back again. Now, um, I have cleared everything over here, and as you can see, it is a default project. So we are going to go through. Now, the first one is going to be um, creating a project. I didn't want to go through this and how to create project, but uh, I thought I'd wait for those who are watching for the first time. How do you create project in Visual Studio? And how do you actually create um, a solution, empty solution? Then how do you add projects? A solution may contain multiple projects, like what we have here. A solution contains two projects, that is an API project and also a mobile and desktop app project. So how can you be able to do this? I uh, spoke about this in the, the last video that I did. But I'm, for the sake of the newbies, I'm going to go through again with just a simple or a short time. Okay. So first of all, in order for us to add multiple projects to our solution, we have first have to create an empty solution. I have done that already, but let's go to the steps for you to know how to create an empty solution. A solution is like a container which contains projects. So you can first create a container, then you add the project inside the container. To create container, click on File. So launch the Visual Studio and now New. So gonna click on Project. So once you wait for the pop-up to load, we are gonna create an empty solution. So as you can see from here, we have project template, so it is loading. So wait for it to get loaded. So now our solution is ready, or our project, our template is ready. You can just choose solution from this area, or you can click here as solution. So just type in solution and you're going to have a solution selected from this list. Here is a recent project template. So um, the template that you have used recently, it is what you see right here. Now with solution, so I can choose on all projects. So let's see if we're gonna have. Okay, so there's a blank solution. So I'll click on this, then click on next. Now I'll give it a name and I'll click on create. So that is a way to create solution. And the name that I give to my solution, it is a login app with app preferences. Now take note. In the previous video that I did, I will link that video under the description. So check it over there. We use a separate architecture, and this video too, we're going to use a different architecture. In the previous video, we use um, event-driven architecture, and this time around, we're going to use the MVVM architecture. That is a model view view model architecture. Now, when we say the event-driven and MVVM architectures, what does uh, what do they mean? Now, I want to talk about the first one, that is event-driven. It means that you assign a name to buttons, then we create an event. We associate an event to a button click. When the button is clicked, we perform the action. So when you check the previous video, you will see buttons, we give it, we give the, the other button's name. For example, it could be login button, logout button, um, save button, etc. So aside from that, we issue a command or event, click to say call to then we generate a new event. So meaning when you click on the button, it has been wired up to an event. Then we call that event to um, perform or handle. Now that is the event driven. So we are using an event to handle all operations. Now we talk about the MVVM here. We're going to use a different architecture. And this MVVM is a NuGet packet that we're going to install, created or implemented by the .NET community. And inside that, it automatically generates the code for us. What we need to do here is to specify um, the attribute inside the package and specify the observable property attribute on top of the um, variable. It supports um, private variable and it generates each public variable. So that is it. Now MVVM is very simple and that's what the modern day application use. So the first one, event driven, we use that. 
Now with this, you're going to use the MVVM, that's the modern one. And you're going to know the difference between them. So if you want to actually compare the differences, check that video, please, I'll link it in the description. So you can check there and I'll click on that button and I'll watch that video. You can also watch this video. All they are all logging up, but there are some features in this MVVM that I did not add to the event driven one. So watching this is going to help you and enlighten you to a lot of features in um, this MV architecture and also creating this project as well. Now, once you have created this um, solution as a container, let's add our project. So first, we're going to add our login API. So this is a web API. So the same thing, click on file, then new. And now here, instead of this all project type, to specify or to narrow it down, you can just click on the, the last one as API. Then make sure you have language as C sharp selected. If you're using the F sharp or whatever language that you are using, you can select it over here. As you can see, we have a list of languages, but you know my favorite here it is C sharp. That is what I've been using since. So I'll go for the C sharp. If you know C, F sharp, JavaScript, uh, Python, etc. You can use any that you think is okay. V basic is also there. But let's maintain the C sharp. Then so as you can see. You choose this and I'm going to clear the solution and like I can say I have ASP call web API so click on this then click on next give it a name and the .NET framework that we are choosing here it is 7.0 that is what we are using you can choose the preview of 8 you can choose 6 they are all there so we have 6.0 we have 7.0 and we have 8 for this project we're using 7.0 so as you can see from here we have 7.0 we have 3 5 6 7 and 8 we're using this 7.01 click on create and now you have it created aside from that the next one that you're going to do here is you're going to add another project to this solution now we have added the login api that's the login app.api let's add a mobile or desktop app project that is a mari so here i'm going to choose the same section now because we have mario over here so choose the first one dot net mario app and i'll click on next and i know the culture must be the same so if you're choosing dot net 7.0 you must choose 7.0 for this mario app you can't choose 7.0 here and choose 8.0 or 6.0 there no the culture must be the same the fundamentals must be the same so they must all run on the same dot net framework so project name give it a name now click on next and now here you choose the framework of 7.0 and now click on create and you get it created so uh, that is a way to create it now um let's go through the architecture of this okay so we know what you are going to do with it first of all when you open this login um, app.api you can see here api is um boot that i want to slide the board means this is a startup project. So when I run this application, this is what I'm going to start. This login app dot Mario here won't start. If you want to set this start, then I right click here and I'll choose on set startup what project. So set a startup project. So as soon as you do that, it's going to move from this login app then come to this. But in case you want to run the two at the same time, right click on the solution explorer, then go to configure startup project. And now in there, you're going to select multiple projects and now choose the two projects, uh, even in order of starting. How do you want them to start? Which one to start first? So click on multiple startup projects. As you can see from here, there's an API and there's a mobile and desktop app. So you can click on this drop down. So start and also this start. Now click on apply. So both of these are going to start together when you click on this run button. But for now, we want to work on the API. So we make the API as a startup project. When we are done, we make the Mari also a startup project when we start to work on it. Now let's let's take some few minutes to go through this. Now if you check here, this is a connected services. So all services that are going to be added to this are um, going to be under the API. We have a dependencies that's going to handle all our NuGet packages and all the application is going to depend on in case we have um, other applications or other projects uh, depending on this example is this login mari app you know this app here depends on this but you're not going to add this project reference but i'm going to use an api to call that 
but let's say you have a class library that you want to add to this api you can just that's where you have to add a class library and also all our NuGet packages we have our properties and that holds our launch settings so as you can see from here all our launch settings as an http and all the various um type that you need to run here is express and etc that's where you can find it when our controllers hold that it is a, is a, is a hat yeah that is a the con that's a controller as the name implies control of the project control the whole project that's we're going to create our controller files in it creating a method in the controller file and run them app settings here contains the you can add settings that you're going to be using some variables as json that you're going to be using example is maybe database connection you can add it to right there and i can see we have program that's a registration unit where you have to perform your di that's a dependent injection where you have to register all uh, NuGet packages before you use them. Weather forecast here is a default um, controller. So we're not going to talk about this. The default one, when you run the project, that is what you see. Now, so let's run this API. So I click on this, or oh, you see it is selected already. So let's click here to run this API. And you see the default settings or the default controller that is known as the weather forecast so that's the default one as you can see we are running it so let's wait while it is being run now when we come to the visual studio installer here you can see we have um those uh, of you guys who haven't installed the dotnet married launch of visual studio installer go to click on this any of the version that you have click on modify and now the modification you're going to select under desktop and mobile apps you're going to select dotnet maui that is a workload that you need to install to get the Mari feature and uh, run it. So that is it. Make sure you have it selected. And also make sure you are connected to the internet because you have to download some of the packages and install it on your computer. Yeah. So that is for this installer. Now this is running as you can see from here. Let me close the search bar. So that is the default weather forecast. And uh, that is an inbuilt one. So we cannot run it and get a default settings here. Okay, so that is our API. So API is running perfectly and everything is intact. Now let's go to let's talk about the architecture for this Mari project. So I'm going to close this. Okay. So close this. All right. Now I want to go to the Mario project. So I'm going to make this as well. I'm going to make it as setup project. Now with this setup project, this is also the architecture that we need to use. The first one, the dependencies, as I've explained it already in the API. Second one, too, I've explained that. Now the platforms here contains all the necessary platform that you're going to create application based on Android, iOS, Mac Atlas, Tizen, and Windows. Windows is for Windows application. Tizen is for um, Samsung apps, Samsung mobile devices. We have Macatalix is for the Mac, Apple, and iOS is for the iPhone. Android is for Android phones. Yeah, so these are the code base file that we need to use. Now here, we actually don't much, uh, much care about this. What we need to do here is to create an application and it's going to run on these platforms for all the necessary platform that you need so all the resources that you need it got them installed over here resources is what we need um, in terms of media images icon font uh, splash images and etc styles they are found here so in this video we're going to talk about how to add some of the images and how to utilize the images inside the page as you can see um, in the introductory video now when you come to up here Actually, that's where we need to add our resources. So examples what have been done here, our resources have been added here. At times too, if you want to create your flyout, that is a sidebar, you can also do that in here. And also when you can go to the app shell, that's a navigation hat. So where you want to create navigation, if you want to change the default settings of the page, maybe you have created a new page and you want to change the default one from the main page to that page, you can do it over the app shell here and also you can also create your tabs your flyout your menus and everything and create them here as well 
all these XML files here contain their C sharp. That's the code behind. So we work on the front side, we work on the back side, and we make it complete. The next one is the content page, main page. So that is when you run the application, as you can see from here, when I run this application, the main page is going to display. So this is just a content page that you see. And this is a default test that you see on the page now when you run it. And you can see we have the MariProgram.cs. It's the same as the program.cs file in the API. That is the registration you need for all packages and all content pages. So we need to register them over there to get it notified and also registered and able to run them. So let's also run this and see if it's also working. So I click here, make it selected, and I click on this virtual machine. Now this is a window machine. Now you can also choose an Android app. If you want to install an Android, I click on the tools. Now I click on Android and now Android Device Manager. So we launch the device manager. And aside from that, you can install some emulators with their various APIs. So starting from Android version 1.0, it, it goes up to 13.0. So you can decide which one that you want to install. I have 5.1, I have 6, 6.1, I have all of them installed there on my machine. So I can choose any at, it, at the time. If I want to choose it, click on this drop down. Now you see we have this Android emulator here. So this emulator, you can see I have 6, I have 7.1, 8.0, 8.1, 9.0, 5.1, 6, 7, and 10. Okay, so I can choose any that I want and i use it in my application also so once you have the um, studio open you can see this is running 5.1 is running now so you can install click on the new and now when you click on new you can now select the base device processor and on this um, version so this is 13.0 the current one it goes up to 5.0 so you can choose any of this and i click on create make sure you are connected to internet because you're going to add some package is going to download from the internet and install it in the visual studio it's very easy to do it okay so that is it now let's run this application then so i'm going to click on this now we wait for it to run then we see if that is also working so when it works it means a solution is uh, um working perfectly and our project in that solution is also working fine so we can now go ahead and start building our api so as you can see from here that is a window app now, if you choose any of the Android version and I run it, you're going to have also the Android one. The reason why I like to use this window machine here is it is very easy and it is fast in execution. The Android one, if I choose them later, it's going to take some time and I don't want to skip wasting those times. So I'm going to use this. If I shrink it like this, it turns a mobile app, isn't it? Now, if I open it wider, that is a desktop app. Yeah, so that's how I love this. So I can also increase it. And that's what you see here. All right. So um, that is it for the creating of the project. Now, in the next video that I'm going to talk about here is going to be creating or start, start working on the API. So let's, I'm going to take some water and I'll come back. And now when we move on, we're going to talk about creating the API or creating or working on the API project. All right, guys, so welcome back again. Now let's talk about, or let's work on the API first. So I'm gonna make the API project selected as a startup project. And I'm gonna close all these, close all tabs. So I'm gonna open it, the API. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is very simple thing. Let's first create a database connection first then we install our packages that's the NuGet packages and then we can now move on with our migration and creator controller so let's click on the app setting.json now in here let's specify database connection so connection string and set put a comma here now let, let's give it a name as default connection so with this default connection let's set the server here to local so that's a local server local db and aside from that let's set a database name 
So our database is equal to let's say login API and marry API and marry DB. So that's our database name. Now let's set trusted connection underscore connection. Let's set this to true. And also let's set trust server certificate. Let's also set this to true. And the last one is so multiple so multiple active results let's set this also to true so multiple active results or result set set also this to true so we have to create this so that our connection will be stable we can query up um data from the database using this connection so transfer connection to true transfer certificate to true and multiple active result sets we set this also to true and uh, that's all okay so you have comma separated and that's a connection string so this is the default connection string and now save that now when we are done the next thing to do here is very simple we have to create our so let's edit we have to create our db app db contest so with the app db contest we first have to create a database sorry that is a um folder first now inside this folder we create our db contest class that is a database connection um file so when i click on the project let's add a folder here and this folder let's name this as data so we're going to name this for that data now let's create a class or a model in this folder name it as appdb contest you can actually name it any any name that you want but for this tutorial we're going to create name it as appdb contest so add the class And we're going to name this class AppDB App Contest. So we wait for this template to load. So let's change it to AppDB Contest. Once we have this class created, we have to install some packages. Um, so that's a NuGet package that we're going to use the entity framework and also the database uh, management system so that's the sql server that's what we're going to use as an api so when i click on dependencies and i click on manage nuget packages i think i've already installed them here so you have to install these packages let's see So we make sure you install Microsoft Entity Framework Core and also install um, the framework core.sql and also install tools. So these are the three packages that you have to install. When you check here, you can see that I have installed them already. So I need not to install them again. And we see we have this green check um, displayed. Okay. So install them here. If you can't find them in the installed file, uh, click on the browse tab and now install them here that's very simple okay so when you are done then this rdb contest let's inherit from a class um that is uh, found in the one of the packages that we have installed that's the ef core so db contest now this db contest control period and to control plus dot and uh, use microsoft entity framework core so right click on this or control period and now you can generate constructor and pass in this db options we're going to inherit from the base class that is the db contest so loading suggestions now let's use generate constructor with this db contest option so you can now grab this and now in here let's paste this here it is inherited from this base option so this is a base class db contest 
now the next thing that we are going to do here is to perform our so our database name database table name so we're going to use database table name as users and then we need to use db set and we need to create a class a model known as user okay then with this we're going to say users so let's create this model first so let's copy this so it's in explorer right click on the project add a new folder and now this folder name it as models right click on this add a new class and this class user so that is the class which contains properties which are going to be used in a database column so you want to handle um there's an id user id so let's say user id also we have string and this could be name and let's say this is string this is email and let's have the last one and this also string and this is password so these are the property that we need so in a database table name we're going to have user id column we're going to have id column or id field um, name field email field and password field let's save this now keep editing let's go to the rdb contest control period let's include it here with our api models so we're good to go so once you are done with this the next thing that we can do here let's see the next thing that we can do here is to create now let's can set this to default let's set this to default too yeah and this default okay we can save this now let's register our settings keep editing so solution explorer and our program cs so let's restart settings over here so in our setting what are you going to do we are going to call the connection that we set in the app setting the json remember the name here is what default connection so that's what we are going to use so let's go to the program now here we're going to use builder dot services so dot services so dot add db contest so dot add db contest and now the class is what add db contest So we pass in options which point to we can now open this let's close it then we say options dot use sql the packet that we just installed use sql so use sql server then we just have to pass in builder dot configuration dot get connection string because here we pass in the name of the connection string that is default connection remember that default connection is what we use to set a connection name under the app setting.json so passing that now here since you have this you don't you're not going to throw any error here but you can still allow in case um this is deleted we can so we say if it is now we can throw new connection or new um exception so that's an invalid exception invalid operation exception and now we can specify so connection then you can say default connection if 
default connection is not found so we can show this okay now let's add another bucket so I'll show you a section uh, connection was there and you have to clear one of these yeah we have a connection ready now what you have to do here is to create a database so to perform migration okay so let's go to now it is building this so let's wait to build it for us so as you can see we have error here so no let's figure out uh, the error here now they say the process cannot uh, it's being used by another process so let's see so let's build it ourselves let's see what we can do click on the bag and so build okay so i click on this api click on build project and now let's see so succeeded it is built now now let's perform migration so let's go to choose we get packages manager the manager console and now in here we're going to perform our migration in so we're going to add migration we specify the name of the migration and now we specify the output folder the name is dynamic you can change the name and also the location you can change it as well and so i'm going to take a lead here for you to know how to work on this now let's wait for this the partial post initialize then we can now move on with it all right so it is ready now so i can just clear screen and i'm going to add add dash migration so i'm going to give it a name as initial then let's specify the output as o i have a folder called data open it and this is the name of the migration that i want to put in put all in a folder called migrations and so click on okay so to get it run now uh, the reason is we see that here we have this selected uh login.mary so no you're going to perform that we have to select this login app okay so let's choose this and let's do it again so that's a login app rather so we see it succeeded and now let's wait what it is good in it so it is done and as you see there is the file let's update the database so update dash database so it's going to run the um, sql query using the ef call so let's wait so we see it is running it and now it is done so we can now close this now when you check application uh, project solution you can see we have um, a folder called migration in the data folder and when you click on it you see we have the initial class that we specified so our uh, migration is uh, performed successfully now what you have to do here is to create a controller so right click on this controller and i click on add the new controller so this new controller we're going to specify the name as user so user controller so click on api and now uh, instead of choosing the empty let's use the scat folded one so let's use we're not going to use the endpoint endpoint as for minimal apis and now uh, so let's use control identity framework call okay so this is going to perform create read update delete and list all the the data in and now let's click on add they're going to provide the name as user so let's wait so model class which class i want to use I want to use this user class so what the db contest we have the db contest as an app db contest let's select that database provides an sql server so that is automatically selected and now what is the name of the controller we want to use as user controller so user controller now let's click on add so this is going to add a controller to the folder for us so scaffolding like you see it is installing some packages so we make sure we are connected to the internet then we can now move on to this
So this will generate all the other uh, methods that is the create the card operation, create user, add user, delete user, perform all the card operation. When we are done, then we're going to add our own uh, method in it. That is a login. Okay. So let's wait for the scaffolding to finish the, the scaffolding objects and uh, we move on with the login. So we're going to create only one method. The rest are going to be generated for us automatically by what we have um, selected or chosen. So let's wait. So you can see that it is done and we have our controller generated for us. So here you can just click control period to remove all unnecessary using. So we're going to remove all the necessary ones. We have all of this here. So this is an API. API and the user controller is the user controller. We have our contest added like as you can see. Our RBB contest has been created and assigned over here. And we have our get method to return all users, get all users, get a specific user by ID. And also here, we're going to, um, as you can see, put. So that's an update user. And the next one is post user. So that's a add a new user. And um, yeah, so that's a, so here we have a task a user as this checked over here for us. Now, what we are going to do here is to add our own one and um, that's going to be login. So let's have, this is HTTP get. And now this get, you're going to specify the route is login. So login slash, then you're going to provide here as email. Then you're going to provide also password so it is slash login and email and password now here let's specify public and async task so this async task you know there's an action result and you're gonna come out with what user and we say login so we need email that is specified and we need password that also specify as a query parameters. And also we can say that, so if email, so let's use, so if string dot is null or white space, So let's specify this email. Okay. And also we can say, and um, string dot is now a white space. Then we can specify this password. So if they are not now or they are not um, white space, then we cannot move on with this else we can return bad request can return bad request so this is what you're going to do so we're going to check now you know when you call this get user it is returning a single user here get user it is returning a user here so you cannot grab this so in here, let's say user user is equal to get user. This method, and now you're passing. So this is we need an ID, okay? And you're not going to specify only ID. So let's use, it's called to await appdb contest. So here we need to specify this contest dot users so dot where then let's specify x max to x dot email dot equal equal to this email
and also x dot password equal to this password coming in so dot first or default async So we're going to store the output under this user. So here, we're going to make a check to see if user is found. We can now use variable instead to clear this, this one. Then email can be null, so let's specify this as null. Then we say if user So if user is not equal to now, then you want to return. If user is not equal to now, so return, okay, user. Okay. Oh, uh, this is what we can do the one line of statement so we can say return user is not equal to now question mark then return okay with the user or return instead of now return not found So return if user is not equal to now, then return the user else return not found. Okay, so this is what we need to do to get this ID done. Now, once you're done with it, let's save this. This is going to run it, and I'm going to run this application to see if it's, it's going to work. I'm um, going to pass in an ID and see. So let's see. Now, um, let's go to tools um go to let's see if we can have click on view then let's see if we can have this um other tools go to other window and let's see can we have an endpoint explorer let's try it to see so endpoint explorer Let's see if this explorer is going to grab us this. So click on this drop down. And we have all the drop down, all the lists here. So let's specify the post first. So I click here and I click on generate request. So that is post. Let's wait for the request to get generated. Okay, so this is a post. And now we need to specify name now name is so let's say this is frederick hughes let's specify um email and that is Hughes at gmail.com. Let's specify password. And let's say Hughes at one, two, three. Now let's issue this and see if it's going to work. So post. So we can see it is sending a request and now yeah it is done let's change it and add another one so admin so this administrator now the email is admin So admin, now the password is admin. Let's see, let's post this. Oh, 
okay so we say this go on now this is a new way that's a in in the feature version that is in the version of preview version 8.0 and above uh, yeah 2022 preview version contains this that's an http file and that is what we can use to test it so instead of wasting time to run this the the swagger ui to run this and to test everything here we can now test everything within the application that's what we are doing let's add another one so this is user and the user is user at gmail and the password is user so click on run this and i have it so let's see endpoint explorer now let's get all generator so let's get all so you see we have three data in our database table let's log in and see so go to endpoint now this login so generate request and now this login we need to specify email so this is admin at gmail.com and we need to specify the password at admin at one two three when this works successfully we're going to return the details of this get and i can see we have the details here so it means that it's working let's specify this user to and see so user and the password is user let's run this good we have the user details here so it's also working perfectly now our controller is done now our api2 it is activated now what you have to do here is to consume our api in our mario project but as i speak now we haven't created the mario project yet so let's go in there and create our project we've created a project already but let's go in there and design our forms and also try to include or call this api in the mario project okay so we can uh, make it a dependent uh, i'm going to depend on this to, to to retrieve the very values over here and i'll work with it okay now you make sure there is a local host and there is a, the address and the port here is 7173 all right guys so we are going to now work on the mario project that is a desktop and mobile app project now we are done with the api and as you saw in the the testing it is working so we can now go to solution explorer and now i'm going to close all and leave this so close all but this yeah so solution explorer now you can see from here we have can now shrink the api and now expand the mari project so let's create a content page that's a login so right click on this let's say this is a startup project so set this as a startup project that's a mari project right click and now add new item and this item we are going to choose content page.net mari content with xaml and the name of this is going to be login so login page.xaml now once you have created this page we have to install the architecture what make this as an architecture project the mvvm i said earlier that we are going to use this mvvm that is a model view view model it is actually a code behind file the display that you see the actual code that you see when a user interacts with the ui it is what you know as the mvvm the code behind file is going to handle it the mvvm is going to handle the code behind file okay so it's very simple nothing not difficult at all so we have to install this right click on this solution explorer dependencies and now go to install or manage the get packages and now in here click on the browse tab and install or type in community toolkit dot mvvm community toolkit dot mvvm it was created by microsoft so it is over here the current version as is as i speak here it is 8.2.0 so install that you can see from here i have it installed okay 
so when you are done you can now go to the page that is so this is the explorer now the login component that we have created that is the the content page i normally say component because of blazer so if i say component i am referring to the content page pardon me for that okay uh, so i won't confuse you now the login content page that we have you can see we had the ui and it has the code behind file so with this that is we're going to perform all this but when you install the toolkit you can put everything in this uh, code behind file for this login page ui so we have to create a view model and a folder and so you can name it a name that you want but it is advisable to put it as a view model so you know it is the MVV architecture that you are using but i can change the, the, the folder name to a name that you want so i click on this and i'm going to create a new folder and the name of this new folder here is going to be view models so view models now this view model let's create an mvvm that is a, a class now this class is going to have the name the same name as the page because the file that we're going to create here all the event or all the yeah event or functions happen in here are going to be used by the the mother ui so let's give the login page the, the name of the ui is login page.xml so let's use the mvm name as what login page view model so add a class and add the name is login page view model we do that so we can identify it easily so login page so we add the view model to the name of the content page login page view model and we put that inside this view models folder it is a class take note click on add now in here you know with the login when you're about to design the ui you're going to use the email and password that is what we need for now so email and password let's set this so we can clear all this here and at the namespace we can put this to clear this so this must be a public partial class because it is part of a separate what class now the package that we install is a class and we are creating a part of the class so that's why we make it as a partial so the partial part and part form together to form a complete what class so don't forget to add the public and also the partial now aside from that this class has inherited from a base class known as observable no, we don't have to write observable property or is our observable object instead. Yeah. So you can see it is using a commit to kit dot component model. So that is a base class that it is going to inherit from. And here, when you go to solution explorer, go to the dependencies. And now .NET 7.0 Android, click on it. Analyzer, click on it. Now we see this is a community toolkit over here. Now we have uh, generators. So we have meta generators. We have uh, variables or generators. So as you can see from here, we have this. This is what we're actually going to talk about most. Community toolkit dot source generator. So if I open the source generator. You can see we have a lot of generators over here when you add the property of observable property it's going to generate over here so you can see there's an observable property generator there's observable object what generator so now we have inherited from this observable object so if i click on this observable object you're going to see details of this over here so this generator is not generating files yet let's see the observable property this generator is not also generating files yet by the end you see this is going to work here for us now let's see so let's specify what you need to use here and we're going to specify username and password so let's say let's set this to private private string and that is a so let's say email okay email and now private string password 
that is what we need to log in now the reason why i'm using this underscore here it is we are specifying it within the scope of this now there is a private variable so it is not public now as soon as we apply an object property or observable property to this as a current toolkit mvvm it's going to generate eight public one and the public one is going to be the capital letter so instead of this email the public is going to be like this email and instead of this password the public is going to be like this password so that is why you need not to provide this password here as you're going to convince yourself okay i'm going to confuse yourself so do not um use underscore instead to create all private variables so the public it can be what easily identified okay now what makes it or what i'm going to do so that this generator can generate it it's very simple let's add this observable property so add this observable property attribute to it. Now, as soon as I add, let's go back here, and I can see that. Let's see. So there's an observable property. So I'm going to close this, open it again. Now we see it has generated something here. So if I click on this, let's see what has been generated. Now I specify this is a document from what is email, the private email that we specify. And now it has generated H get. That's that's a private. And as you see, we have a public email here. So we can now use this public. So we specify this underscore as a private and it has specified a public as an upper letter for us. So that's why I said do not use upper letter here, but I use a lower and another underscore. Okay. So now you understand this. Let's apply the same thing to this password. Password. So now we have this. So as I speak now, we can use this email as a public variable. As you can see, I've seen it has popped up. We can also use this password as a public what variable, and it will also pop up as well. So this we can use this as a um, public variable. If you want to check this let's see solution and um let's close this open it again so there's an observable property so let's cancel this solution explorer now let's take a look okay let's let's check it over there and see so observe property i'm going to open this so let's see if we can have we have email here and you can see we have password so that's the public as password here as you can see so this uh, file is going to handle all the auto generated documents okay so now we have this what can we do let's go and design our ui so let's close this now our ui that's a markup so login.xml this is our ui so here we're going to design this so you can clear this off that's the default one you can clear this So, you know, I have some images here and that is what you're going to be using. So I have this log, this user and this logo that they are in PNG. So we can now grab this, can copy them, we go to our page. Now our resource folder. So there's our resource folder, you open it because we have images. So this images. I'm going to click on it and now paste this. So I'm going to paste this uh, media here. That's a lock, logo, and user. That's what you're going to be using to design our login page. Okay. So, what's the first thing to do? 
let's use we can use vertical stack layout so vertical stack layout and that is it and let's use frame so we can use frame here and now uh, this frame let's use corner radius let's make it round so as 50 let's also set the width request as 120 and also height request also the same 120 let's set margin zero left 20 top zero right and zero bottom let's set pattern to zero both left top and bottom and maybe border color let's set this to green yeah so here you can decide to set any how you want it okay so it is not like a static you can change this now let's add image so this image the source that we need to add here is uh, logo dot png this is what we are adding and um let's set height height request to 80 and i'm gonna start with, with request first so with request to also 80 now um vertical option let's make it a center so let's make this a center and horizontal to the same center that's all so this is what we have now now in order for us to let's close this so in order for us to see what we are doing live let's save this click on this so we can now run the live preview so this is building so let's wait for us to get built then we can now click on this window machine to have the live preview version so we can see what we are doing all right so let's click on this to run this up all right so it seems like we are not seeing anything what is the default one yes of course because we haven't set login page as a default yet so that's how we save this so let's close this and let's work on it uh, later on we're going to see the output here so let's see what we can do to get that one set let's see so let's go to the solution explorer now let's see the app shell you can see from here that you have main page now you can change this main page to login page and now this route let's set this to login page and we are good to go so run this again and let's see the output now so we are setting the page the default one as login let's see okay so you can see we have the image in the middle right we have this circled one over here you can decide to set this to any how you want it but for now let's maintain this as login so if i shrink it it is so in the middle you can see it's in the middle yes of course all right so we're on the right path let's move on with it now what you have to do here again is to have a label and we can display something like sign in to continue on login to continue on whatever that you want to do with you can do that in there remember that is in the ui so ui you can customize the way that you want you want it to be done so let's give the space here and maybe i can write on top here this is image logo on top and control k k and c comment this okay so here too i can say this is free test for sign up or for sign in so this test is free the reason why i said it's free is it is just a label 
Okay. Now let's have a label. Or maybe we can have a stack. Let's have stack layout. Okay. Now this stack layout, let's have label here. And this test, you're going to say welcome. Now, let's put this as font attribute as bold. Then, font size as large. And maybe test color. Let's see. Can we have hmm, how nice you have blue? Blue violet. Uh, maybe that's okay. Then let's have the next one. Can we have another label here? Then let's have the test here as sign in to continue. Okay. Now what I want to ask you do here is to set this horizontal options to center, vertical options to center. Horizontal test align to center. Okay, let's see also vertical test align to maybe center. So that is it. You can decide to skip all this, okay, and uh, maintain only this one the horizontal option and the vertical options. Now let's do the same thing. So instead of this, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab these features and I'm going to paste it here. Just keep typing. Now, this test color. So, test color is blue. So, Alice blue. No, Alice blue is not good. I want us to have blue, deep one. Blue. Okay. Let's see. Dark blue, dark cadet blue. Hmm, okay. Let's see. You can decide to choose. So you have light blue, light sky blue. All right, let's maintain this. Okay. Then font attribute. Maybe bold. And um, that is okay. So we can now save this. Now, when you come to this, let's say let's set the orientation. So orientation here, you can set this to um, horizontal. Horizontal, it won't help. Let's set this to vertical. Okay, and now let's see if you're gonna have pattern. Uh, let's set pattern. Oh, can we have? We have spacing maybe 10. Then let's set margin. So margin is 0 left, top is 20, 0, and bottom is 0. Save this and uh, let's run this and see. Oh, all right. So that is what we have done. So as you can see, it's in the middle. So sign into continue. Welcome. Sign into continue. Okay. Let's close this. So with the pattern, we can maybe set here to 25 to give you now space up. Okay. So aside from this, that is a welcome. That's a free text. Now the next thing that you're going to do here is to create our, let's say our grid. Now to handle our image and the icons over there. So this is so this is great for email and password and yeah images. So 
So control K C. Now let's go in for the grid. Now this grid we have row definition. Now this grid row I'm going to pass it dot star star and star three. Maybe I'm going to pass in margin. So zero. I can talk about 60 for top or 50 for top, zero and zero for bottom. And um, pattern, I'll make it as 10. Also, row spacing, I'll make it also 10. Then, horizontal align option, hmm, center. Okay. So in here, let's have the stack layout. Now the stack layout, let's first set orientation to this horizontal with this. Then in between, let's have our image. So with this image, we can talk about the image source. And now this source here, it is user.png. Now this let's set with request to 30 height request to 30 that's for the image now we have this image let's have the entry this entry let's have the test now this test we are banning it to email so Email is not working here because we haven't added the namespace. So let's go in and add it. So X M L N S. Then this is a view model. So this is view model. So this view model can specify like this namespace. And the name is login app dot mari dot view models. That's supposed to be the name. So before this namespace, I'm gonna solve this CLR space, the namespace, so this dot view models, yeah. Now let's see. This is email. Will it pop up? Still, it is not popping up. So we have to add binding first. Then email. Do we see email? No, we don't. Let's check it once more. So after adding this, I forgot this, we have to add the data type. So X and that the data type. And the data type must be this view model. So view models. Then we can now use this login view model. So here, let's see. So email and I have it over there. Okay. Let's set the height of this. So width first. So width request 300. Height request 50. And also let's set up the margin. So 10, right? 10 left. The rest are zero. There is there. Then let's have a placeholder as email address. Then let's set font attribute as bold. Yeah, so very simple thing that we are doing. So that is for this 
So I'm going to space up this and I can write in here. This is for email address. So control K C. Now I can just grab the same thing and I'll paste it for password, isn't it? So grab this. Then paste it here. So instead of email address, this was password address. Yeah, password. And this is going to be lock.png. And here it is password. Now you have to add one feature, and that is its password. We set this to true. So it's going to mask the test. All right, so now we have this grid done. You can now separate this, so that is a grid. We have to also add one thing because you know the rows are three and we have used two now. Okay, so this stack layout, we have to specify grid dot row. This is one. Because the first one is zero and this one. And let's see. So the same stack layout. And now this is grid dot row. And that is two. So making out the three. Let's have margin. The left is 35. Zero, zero, zero for top, bottom, left, and also orientation. You want to be horizontal. Now in here, let's add check box, and now it's checked. We say false. Let's have font attributes. Let's come to the next one. And that is label. So this label test and we say remember me. Although we're not going to provide or we're only going to provide the function for this feature, but it is good we add it there. So later on we can add it. Okay. Or you can even do it yourself. I believe you can do it. Yeah. And font attribute that is bold. Less half margin. We can talk about negative 10. That's for left. 13 for top. 0 for right and 0 for bottom. Then the next one, we're going to have button. So ask yourself, what are you going to use this button for? That's what you're going to use for forget password. So this is test. So forget password. So we can talk about background color. Let's use transparent. Let's set test color to, I like this, Indiana red. Let's set font attributes to bold. And since they're button, definitely we're gonna have a border weight. So let's say to make it as a test button, let's set border weight to zero. And let's set margin to 50 left and the rest as zero. So that is what we are going to do for now. Now, once you have this, you must have a button. So that is the end of our grid.
now here let's specify this first so this is remember me and forgot password button and check box control kc now we are done with this let's have a button add up here so you can say this is sign in button and we can put it as a button and now this button let's have command so with command we're going to leave this let's move on so font attributes it's going to be bold so this is test so sign in let's have corner radius mm, corner radius 10 let's have font size large will be okay then one thing left here for us to do is we have to add the font size to this level that is with the remember me i believe you can set the font size let's maintain that and see and then we can modify it so we have this button as uh, the font size here it is large okay so let's set vertical option to center and last one let's set margin so margin left is 30 top is zero right is 30 bottom is zero so that is a button now let's say so this is new user sign in so we are asking the person to oh, sign up so if you are new user then sign up Control KC. Now here, let's use the stack layout view. So stack layout, and we can now talk of maybe margin zero left, um, thirty five on top, right is zero and bottom is zero let's set orientation to be um no horizontal will be okay then horizontal option center then in between let's add label so this label we set test we add a person new user question mark horizontal options center vertical options to center test color blue then let's have font size small let's add a button so we're going to make it as a test button so we have button now test sign up we have font size here 
pismo. Test color. Let's say green. Font attribute bold. Border width zero. So let's also set vertical options center, horizontal options center. So I believe this will help. This is not the best, but it's manageable. And let's set one, the last one as background color. So background color, you see transparent. So when you save this, let's run this application. Now let's see what we have now. So we're going to have problem here because we did not specify a parameter here. So let's go to the view model. Let's have a method first, then we specify it in there. So in a view model, we are going to specify the button. So when the button is clicked, what do you want to do? So we say public. and async so let's say login or sign in so sign in and to make this let's add relay command this is going to generate this so we have async and this could be void so this sign in let's make this so this sign in let's go to the page and now where we have our button this button command let's specify binding and now that's going to be sign in so sign in command so this is also going to be generated and add what well, the command that's why we have this command added now let's run this and see oh okay so wow we have our page already now as you can see from here these are text box and these are the images that we added this is uh, a button. A button is too large. So we can let's change this from um, large to maybe 20 pixels or 20. And you can see we have this. Remember me. It's a checkbox. And I can click on to click to check it. And I can have a forget password. This seems like a test, but rather it's a button. And let's change this to password. If I pass in this, it is mask. So let's change this to password yeah so um let's close this so here when you come to this side there is our button so instead of this large you can change this to maybe 20 font size 20 and now also let's see what else can we do um after setting the size here We have to also change here. This for password. So entry test placeholder. So instead of this email address, here is password. Okay, so by doing so, we are done with our design the UI. What next can we do? We have to add the pages and these pages we need a home page so as soon as we are done logging in we can navigate to the home page isn't it so let's see let's create a folder here at views and let's create pages in there so right click on this project 
let's add a new folder and uh, the name of this folder here let's set as views let's create home page so let's add new item and we choose this Mary and this is home page so we say home page then we add that okay so once we have this home page added what else can we do we can also add some pages as so from home page let's add two pages more new item and content and maybe this is going to be a home page so about so about page let's add one more you can have um, contact page so you have contact page here and aside from this let's create one page here you know this, this is logging up so we can also create one page and this page we can name this page as content as what register or sign up so this one is register page So let's create a, a folder also and a model that we're going to use for the registration. So let's add new folder and it's models. So the model that we use in the API, let's go in there and then grab it. So there's a user, user model. Let's grab all this. Let's go to our page our project now in our models let me just minimize this yeah so in this models folder so if i click let's add a class as user so here it is user and now we are going to paste this so let's see what we can do and here we set this to public so let's paste what we have so we have user id name email and password and that's what we use to register okay so let's take off this all right now now we are done with this you know we have a controller so we must have service here which is going to hold this perform gather the data and i'll send it to the api okay so let's create another folder here and this folder let's save it as services so there is services now this services let's new item let's create an interface and implementation so this interface this is i login let's say repository so this i login repository let's add this now here this is public 
we can clear all this so let's first have a task so this is user and uh, that is login so under login in we need string email and string password we can also add task and the same user or you can decide to not make it as a task we can say uh we are not returning anything here so we can say void register and now we need user and user so control period let's include this models copy this paste this here so this to register and this to login Although it is I login repository, but we can still have register here. Or we can create another a register um, repo and then paste it there. So first of all, let's cut this. Let's focus on this. The login. So when we are done, let's go to service folder and let's create a service. And that's going to be a class implementation class. And now this is going to be login service. So this login service is going to inherit from I login repository. So we can clear out this, set up the namespace well. And now here, control period, we can implement the interface. So control period, let's implement the interface here. And here must be public. Implement interface. So in this interface, we are going to perform all other operations that we need to do. So we can create you can say var client is equal to new HTTP client. And now this is a URL. Or you can say local host URL is equal to. Now when we check this. There's a localhost URL, so you can grab this. And this are API2. So let's copy this. And now in the login service, we paste this here. And since in the API, let's go again. Now you can see an API, then user login and this so you can grab this and i can paste it here so user login then here it is email and password so let's clear all this now when you get to this we say plus email plus then we bring this first slash then plus password so we grab the data, we pass to the API, and off you go. So once you have this, we can say clients dot base address is equal to new URI. Then we pass in this local host URL. Then we can actually grab the HTTP response message. So let's create an object as a response as a variable here is equal to so await then 
http dot get async then we can specify the request url so that is a plant dot base url base address so we're executing this so let's see then we have the response here equal to await then we have our client dot get async and now here this get async or we can specify let's see what we have to do so we get async then here we need to specify the request URI so the request URI here that is a Client that base so that is a local host URL. Let's see if actually that is it. So here supposed to be client that is client dot base address if we check here it is http request response message okay then we can create user user equal to response dot you can grab the content and i read from json async and that is a user so you have get an await then let's return so await task dot from results then passing this user okay so that is login so it's going to grab the date content here and now store it here and return the result so it could be now or it could be use data but in case so that's what when the button is uh, clicked when this method is called that is what it's going to do okay so we can grab this let's use try block so try and now here catch you can have an exception ex then we can go in for return let's use an await so await display alert so if this is not given as the access to display alert then maybe we can use shell dot display alert okay so let's see What we need to do here so shell dot current dot display alert and here we can write of error then we say x dot message then we're gonna have ok button and return so in here what we need to do after creating this is also 
um, important. Now let's see. So with this button, so we need to check. Now let's clear this first. And here, let's return now here. When exception occurred, return now. And also, before we, we read, before you read from this, it will be good if you check for the response first. If the status is okay, then we return this to the user. So let's, once you have this, now after we grab the, the response here, let's check it here. So we say if response, dot is success status code meaning if it is 200 then let's read we read the response and now we return the response else we return now to okay all right, so we have our login service ready. What we need to do here is to initialize this repository that we have created, the service. So where do we, can we initialize it? Let's go to the V model. And now in here, maybe on top here, we can say read only. So I login repo. Then we can say login service. So equal to new login service. So this is a repository and this is a service. So when you call this, we will be able to use the repository right here and its definition in this login service. Okay. Now, after we are done with this, we need to initialize the, the user model in the app.xml.cs file to make it global object so that um, we can store the user details, name, email, and etc. So let's go to solution and now click on the app.xml. Now with it, the could be hand file in here Let's make it a static, so public. And let's make it a static code. We don't want it to change. Then we say user and user. So we create an object here to store the user here. So control period. And this must be on top in this class. So we have public, might be lowercase, public static. Then we have this user. So this is like a global variable where we can use it anywhere. Let's clear this. Okay. So let's go back to the login page view model to handle the button click. So here, when I click on sign in, what should happen? Maybe you can decide to check if uh, internet connection is available or not. Okay, but to check, so let's say to to check if the person. So to check if internet connection is active. But here you're not going to use that. So Control K C. If you want to do that, you can use if so connectivity. So dot current dot network access is equal to network access dot internet. Okay. So dot network access. 
store.internet. So you can use it to check. Mm. So, but here we, we are not going to use to check for internet. We are not going to use this. So let's move on. Whether you have internet or not. Although we are going to use as a, a starter base and we, we have a controller as local host. We're not going to use the internet for now. But if you want to use the internet, maybe under real circumstance, uh, you need to connect to the internet before you can sign in. So you have to use it to check. Here might also be in the try catch block. So that we don't have any um, exceptions and handle exceptions. What are you going to um, catch up our application? So we say display alert. Then let's use await. So shell dot current dot display alert. So you can have an error ex dot message. Then we can have an OK button. Then return. So let's work on the try. So let's first check if string dot is null or y space. And that is going to be for email and if string is now our white space password so if they are not uh, empty that's what you want to do let's call this so let's store user user is equal to and here control period user so this equal to await we can now call in the login service then dot sign in or dot login we pass in email and password So we store the output here at the user. Then the global variable that we set and the app.xml here, let's store data here. So in here, we are gonna say if preferences, if preferences dot contains key. dot contains key and now what is the key that is an app dot user that is the key if it contains this so before we do this we can now pass in this name of then let's use name of so if it contains this then let's remove it maybe it has a default data so dot remove so name of app dot user okay Uh, let's see 
So if here must be three. So control K D. Okay. So after removing the let's set string user. Let's say user details is equal to JSON convert. So here JSON convert, you need to install Newton soft JSON as a package. So let's serialize it. So serialize object. Let's realize this user. So after its realization, let's now set preferences.set. So we're going to set name of the global variable so we can access it. App dot user. Then what is the variable that we're going to set with? That is user details. Okay, so we set it. After setting it, then we saw app dot user details or user is equal to this user that we have stored. That is this user. So we grab the content. Now we set it over there so that we can display hello, welcome, login as admin, welcome as admin, hello, this, hello, that. Okay, the person's name, email, and etc. Now, after doing all these tasks, what we have to do here is to navigate the page to the home page. So I wait, it says shell.current dot go to async. You can specify two dot as home page. But this home page here is a login page. So this won't work. So what will work is Let's specify name of and that is a home page. So send a person to this page. Then that is when this is none. But if it is now, then we can display this so return all fields required so very simple now one thing about uh, using community toolkit dot mvvm architecture is after creating the pages you have to register them in the program. That's the myuprogram.cs. And to the pages, I'm going to use that. So let's go to myuprogram.cs. And now here, let's add. So builder.services.add singleton. So this singleton, first one, we're going to use the home page. Then second one, build out services dot add singleton. I'm gonna use this login page. Then build out services dot add singleton. Here we need to use login view model. So login page view model. Okay, so now we are done with this. We have to now inject this login page view model class in the code behind file for this login page so that it can use its content. So let's go to the login page. There's a login page. Let's go to HCSS. It's a C sharp code behind file. So that is a login and this is a code behind. Now here 
let's inject on top here so login page v model and we can say vm then we can say binding contest is equal to this vm very simple or you can use this keyword okay by this you can decide to take it off it's still gonna work all right now you are done with this let's see now um let's register this in the app shell the two page that we have registered let's go to the app shell and now here let's write in that register route now the key here it is name of the name of here it is home page and now type of that is the value so we have register route we have name of that's the home page we have comma and type of also home page let's copy this and paste it here so this is going to be login page let's grab this paste this here okay so we have added two extra pages so with that two extra pages let's also add them here and the first one we have about page we have contact page so about Yeah. Now the same page, let's do the same thing to the myprogram.cs to register the two extra pages. So this is about and this is contact. Okay. So now we have this, we can run the application to see. Let's make sure our API is running. Now let's run this again to see. Okay, so let's execute and grab so this is the user let's use this this credential so there's the user let's put this user here and now the password is also so that is user one two three let's paste this here click on sign in let's see what happens okay so you can see that no connection could be made because the target machine actually feels it it look at who seven all right so this is what you're going to do let's run this locally so let's select the api and i run this here and now let's wait for this So let's check it. Um, where is our button? So if it is not equal to empty, 
the form all this remove this and set this now set a person send send the user to home page okay so we have to first check this so let's cut this okay now let's see so if user is not equal to now that is where you want this to happen else else when the user to return and display something like then return so something like um email email or uh, password is in correct okay now with this let's close this up so we can copy this username let's close this and that's it marie let's run this so this api is actually working execute so let's wait to see okay so here we have the list so our api is working now let's paste this let's pass with that password so all field required so you can minimize this over here and you can see we have new user so sign in all field required let's find the wrong password and let's see so email or password is incorrect let's pass in the correct one and see so that is user at 123 sign in and i could see okay so it is signing but it is displaying it is because we did not use else statements so let's cut this then we can say else okay so i'll display this yeah so we see it is working and we're able to sign in so we are in here but if you provide in with credentials which are not correct we see you're not going to allow us off with required okay so now we have this what is the next thing to do let's see when you go to the home page let's this uh, create maybe the fly out that's a sidebar so you can create a sidebar in the app shell that xml so here let's create a sidebar so the sidebar it is fly out so fly out item and now in here let's specify the route as home page then fly out display options let's say as multiple items then let's specify the shell content so the title here it is home so that's the first one and content template we pass in data template and now let's include this so xml ns space 
and let's say this is views so views is equal to CLR dash name space then this is login app dot views so we see views we have right over here views then this cannot use this views here so views that is we have all the pages and that is the home page so this share content you can grab this copy this two three okay so maybe or this here you can specify icons too okay so let's go to the folder now we have this house icon we have this too and we have this envelope let's copy this maybe let's try if those SVGs are going to work go to resources images and now we paste it here so under icons let's say so how dot svg that's home page this one is contact page So contact as page and here is about us. And let's see if icon is using dot SVG and let's see icon. So this is envelope dot svg. So let's run this to see. So keep editing. So let's keep this active. Okay. So it's so active. Now let's. So parameter require for reset an application. Okay. Let's see if we can restart this. So restart up. Okay, so we have this. And that is user at let's use user at user oh that is gmail.com and it's user at one two three sign in so invalid let me show this oh okay so you have to run this again so let's run this so let's check something here mm, okay so now it is running let's try so there's a user so get okay so you have a list of users here now let's try our app so sign in okay so you see we have this flyout here we have home 
we have um, home here contact us and about us and as soon as I click on but we see we have it here home to contact and this right and we still have it as a fly out you want to keep you want to hide this because you, see you have home home appearing twice contact us here and about us and also hide this tab so to do that let's go to the shell page so here let's specify shell dot that is called tab so dot tab is tab is visible we set this to force and also come to this end here and now we say fly out is visible we set this to force and yeah we say shell dot fly out visible to this force There is that here already. So we, we write shell dot fly add behavior and that is disable. Yeah, so this is going to work. Let's close this. Let's choose this and now let's run this. Let's keep this also alive. Okay. All right, so when we have that set, what we can do here is we need to, let's see. So let's user at email.com and user at one, two, three. Okay, yeah. So you can see we have home contact and about us. Click on it and we have it. So you can see we have our fly out um, working. And But what we are going to do here is you have to add footer and a button here. Okay. So that's a sign out. So let's close this. Now that is a fly out or the sidebar. I mean, I always say sidebar. So side bar and control K C. So what we need to do here is we can now specify the maybe footer. So let's set the footer here. So you can say sidebar footer. So shell dot fly out footer. So let's use stack layout. Maybe you can set pardon to 20 then let's add button so background so background here let's add color and it is indiana red you can have test as logout and maybe we have test color hmm, white all right then font size font attribute bold 
font size let's say 18 okay now next thing that you want to do here is let's go to the view model we're in the app shell so let's create an app shell view model so let's go to this view model here this is a view model so right click and i click on add class let's name it as app shell view model Uh, there is a public partial class and this class is going to inherit from observable objects okay so we have async void logouts then here we can have relay command then what I'm going to do here let's go to the login view model and now on this we are going to remove it from here. So app shell, let's put this. So we first check if it contains the name user. In case it has it, then remove from the preferences. That's all. Then after removing, then await shell dot current dot go to async and here you can specify home page so let's inject this app shell into this section maybe here too we can say this dot binding contest is equal to new app shell then control period include this uh, view model or we can actually remove this so it's optional and what you can do here is let's go to the app shell and now this button this fired button let's specify this command here so band then and now do we have logouts we don't so we need to add this to this namespace so xml ns then we have this is view model is equal to share out dash namespace so namespace then login up dash view model and now once you have this we're gonna have x data type so equal to then view model and now specify this app shell there you go so let's say logout command we have it so that is what we're going to do when you click on that and the next thing that you want to do here is we want to now create a user control now this control is going to display at the header maybe login as admin login as user and etc okay so let's go to solution explorer now right click here let's add 
another folder and this folder let's make as user controls controls now let's go and add content view so add new item and now dot net mari and now we need to add content view xaml and here this is let's say this is fly out header control so with this fly out this is what we are going to do let's clear this let's use stack layout you can say orientation here is maybe horizontal now in we have label now this label we have test and uh, login as okay so this login as let's go in there and has label and this label let's have x name so lbl um can we use let's use email or username lbl So let's use LBL name. Okay, so let's use the name, not email, or we can use email. So LBL email two. Then maybe you can use this. So test color as maybe green. and font attributes we can set as bold okay now once we have this this is what we need to do now let's go to this this is a fly out control so let's go to the cs here and now when the page loads you want to check so if app dot user is not now if you contain data then lbl you can set it to once here so you want to say LBL let's use so instead of this let's cut this and now here let's give it a name so LBL we say test okay it is uh, be a test so when you go back here you can now say lbl test is equal to this login as so let's add dot test say quality and lbl email dot test is equal to app dot user dot email so once you have this set we have to call this in code so when the person logs in 
that's what we need to call this flyout header control. So let's go to the login. So login view model. Now in here, before we navigate here, this is what you want to do. We want to set this so app shell dot current dot flyout header. So we can have the flyout header here. So flyout header. Okay. Is equal to new. So flyout header control. So we have to inject this control period. So let's use this control. Yeah, we are good to go. So now this, we can even simplify this. So as you can see, name can be simplified. And how can it be simplified? So you can click on this and gonna be at shell.current the flat header. Okay. So now let's make sure our API is still running. Okay, so it's still running. Now let's see. So there's an API. It is still running. And now let's see what we can do from this. Let's run this. So when this also runs, we are going to um, run using the Android as well. So we see in this video, we have um, dive deeper than the previous one. Actually, if you've, you've gotten some knowledge here too. So here we are using the MVVM architecture and the previous video we use the event driven architecture. So you see when you talk about it, when you check the MVVM architecture, it is very simple and nice it's interesting to use so let's wait and see so maybe with the registration i believe you can do the registration or try your hands on it to the registration this source code i'm going to leave it um, at the github link so check the description and you're going to find it there so let's restart this application So it is saying, unless you restart, yeah, that is what I'm doing to so restart this application. Still, still, still. Okay, so let me close. Let me close this. Close this. And now let me run the API first. So run the API. Okay, so the API is about to run. Okay, so the API is now active. Now let's change to the Mari project. And there's a Mari. And let's also run this. So I'm gonna press that. Uh, 
let's see. Okay, so let's see. Let me try to restart this once more. All right, so the reason why we are having all these errors are we haven't closed this, the command. So let's close this. Now let's run this to see. So we save this. Now let's run this. So stop. Let's restart the application. So let's wait. Okay. Now let's change to our API. Because our base is almost done. So it's going to run to give us the form, the app. And let's, okay, so let's change to the API also, test the API. Watching the API and also run the API. So now we have this. And we can bring this down. Okay, we have also this over here. Now let's log in. So this is user at gmail.com and it is user at one, two, three. Sign in. Incorrect. Let's change this. Sign in. And you are good to go. So because here is welcome to net uh, dot net Mary, this home page. If I click on this, because we have this um logout here, we have login as this user at Gmail. So we can actually set this pattern to top or can set the margin of this. Okay. So because we have login as and if you want to do that, it's just a matter of setting up this. So a control. Where you have the control, so that is the control. I can set margin, margin to uh, let's say ten. Okay, so set this to ten, and uh, it's going to rectify that. So you see, we have home contact and about us. And as soon as I click on logout, see what happens. I'm back to the main page. And unless I log in again, as soon as I log in, see I have this by out over here, as you can see. Okay, so let's change this to Android. Let's find this on the Android too and see if this is also going to work. So framework. And I'm going to choose the Android. And now here. Android emulator 5.1. So I'm going to also run this to see if I'm going to have the same display over there. So this is an API. And now let's wait for our Android to over here. All right, so thank you guys for watching this video. Um, if you like what I'm doing, you can give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel as well for more videos. I'm going to catch you up the next time to work on a different or separate project. It could be a Blazor um, web or it could be a mobile app. That is a Mari project. Well, let's see which one gets the vote. Okay, so we start uh, my other project with it. Thank you, guys, and I'm going to see you the next time. So take care of yourself. Bye-bye.